So in today's video, I will be showing you how to create dramatic portraits with one soft light. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram it's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So once again, welcome to my small home studio for you guys who are new to the channel. This is a relatively small shooting area. This is only about 3.5 meters deep and two meters wide. So in today's video, I will actually show you how you can create dramatic portraits even if you are using soft light because the most common notion is that dramatic portraits should be shot with harsh light, but that is not flattering to your subject. So the equipment that I will be using today to create that dramatic photo is of course my very trusty speed light. This one, this is a Sony F60RM. Now it is mounted on this one. This is a Photic Cerberus, which is basically a flash mount that you could put your speed light here via grip. And the best thing about it is that it has a Bowens female mount adapter here in front. What is a Bowens mount? It's basically the most commonly used mount for flash modifiers like this one. So the modifier that I will be using is this, the Fotix 60x90 softbox. The thing that I like about this Fotix 60x90 softbox, this is the Raja series, is that it's so easy to actually put together. I'll show you right here. It's like an umbrella. All you have to do is push it down, wait for it to lock in place. And once you hear that click, that's it. And then, of course, I will have it, let me show you, I will have it double diffused. In other words, I will have a diffuser here, a diffuser here, and my grid. Okay, so let me set this one up. It's attached via Velcro, so that it's very easy for you to put it together. Just a few minutes, you can. So there's the inner diffuser. And then here is the diffuser in front and the grid. The grid is going to be here to be able to control the spill of the light. Now, here is the rear part of the modifier. This is the Bowens male mount. This one goes to this female mount here. And it attaches this way, there we go. And you just have to lock it in place and we're good to go. Okay, there. Now, I also have here just a plain seamless black background that will serve as our background for today. However, if let's say for example you don't have a studio set like this you can actually get the same effect by just having a larger space and not having anything in the background in other words anything that's about six feet away will no longer be lit by light especially with the fact that you have a grid here in front so you don't necessarily need to have a black seamless paper like this however in my particular case since this is a small shooting area it's always best to block all the distraction there in the black in the back and have a nice black background, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tilt it down this way and have it about this high, give or take, there, and put it somewhere here, okay? So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark IV, but this time I'm using the beautiful 50 millimeter 1.2 GM from Sony. Now the reason again why I chose the 50 millimeter was because of course this is a beautiful lens but at the same time I'm going to be shooting a half body portrait. So the 50 millimeter would be perfect for today's shoot. Now I also have this one. This is my w, Sony WRC1M remote commander. This one. This is basically the one that's controlling my Sony F60RM remotely but of course you can use any flash that you want when it comes to off camera flash photography. But the beautiful thing about this flash is of course I am able to control everything in the end menu system of my Sony and at the same time since it is a TTL trigger it basically overrides live view so that I'm able to see everything that I am actually shooting. Now the settings of my camera. I actually have my camera set at 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100 
Now you're going to ask me why am I not shooting with a 1.2 because this time I want everything really in focus so I'm shooting at a 5.6 and at ISO 100 because that's the lowest ISO possible for the Sony A7R Mark IV and it's the cleanest image that I'm going to get. 1 over 250 is because that's my flash sync speed. As you can see now, it is actually pitch black. Oh, by the way, whatever it is that you are seeing now is basically recorded live here in my Atomos Ninja V. In other words, every single image that you're gonna be seeing from here on end will be straight out of the camera. Absolutely no editing has been done. However, the edited photos I normally put at the very end of the video. So if you want to see that, stick around till the very end. Okay, so what else? I also have my white balance set, or it's at auto white balance now. I'm going to set it to 5600 Kelvin. Now, the reason why I want it at 5600 Kelvin is because the speed lights are daylight balanced. Since I know for a fact that these are Sony lights and they do actually give 5600 Kelvin, I'll just set my flash to 50, uh, my, sorry, my white balance to 5600 Kelvin. And then, as you can see also, I am actually on continuous shooting mode because of the fact that these cameras really are fantastic when it comes to tracking eyes. So everywhere that my wife will be posing, who will be my model for today, by the way, everywhere she looks or wherever her face goes, my particular my camera will just track it. Now, my flash is actually off, but this is the actual exposure of my existing ambient light. The moment that I turn on my flash trigger, it's going to override live view and therefore you can actually see all the ambient light in order for me, well, they do this for you to be able to see whatever it is that you're shooting, okay? So with that out of the way, it's time to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. All right. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. We haven't shot for a while. It's okay. It's been a while since we shot, about yes. two, three weeks, right? And of course, we'd like to thank our friend Mela Jimenez for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup today. So the concept of this shoot is, of course, as I said earlier in the intro, is that we are going to be doing a series of photographs creating beautiful, soft light, but dramatic. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, number one, through the help of the inverse square law. The inverse square law states that the closer the light is to your subject, the faster the fall off of the light will be. In other words, if I expose for Coco here, by the time it reaches here in the background, it, is, it will be about two stops underexposed already, therefore giving me a really nice black background. And at the same time, by doing that, we're going to be creating, or by the same time, by having the light this close, we are creating a lot of contrast in this side of Coco's face and her body, okay? Now, we also have a grid so that I can direct the light solely from here to, to focus from here so that, again, we also minimize the spill in the background. All right, okay, so let's try doing this. Um, can you face here, babe, please? Oh, can you move the chair? There, perfect. And then cross your legs and then lean forward. So if you guys are familiar with the channel, you know that I like shooting the short side of the face. But in this particular shoot, I think I will go for the broad side of Coco's face because I just want to get that really nice line in the back of her, in her back, because we're going to slouch her a little bit. And um, lighting up her this side of her face would also be okay because I will have the other side in shadow also. So it still creates that depth. Okay, so let's take a look. Can you lean forward a bit more, babe? There, this way. All right, perfect. And chin towards me. You look fantastic, by the way. Wait, let's shift there, right eye only. Very nice, beautiful, beautiful, dramatic image. Can you look towards here? There, beautiful. Very nice, very, very nice. Actually, we are losing a lot of light here in the back. So what I can do is I can just bring the light slightly lower there so that we can create more shape and form there. Can you lean forward a bit? There, perfect. Eyes straight here. Here, maybe sorry, towards the lens. Very nice, very, very nice. I actually like that a lot. So we're creating dramatic portraits. As you can see, it's a very, very small space, except that since we have our light very close to our subject, we are now confining the light just in this particular area creating that beautiful soft light. Again, having the light closer to her will also create softer light because rule of thumb, the bigger the light source is, the softer the light. Having the light even closer to her will make the light source even bigger relative to her. 
Okay? All right. There we go. Basically, it is just one soft light with a grid. And if you guys noticed, I did move it all around. Thank you very much, babe, for doing this again. I did move it all over the place. But the most important thing is I kept it very, very close to her. By keeping it very close to her, I was able to control my spill and my fall off because of the inverse square law, which basically states the closer the light is, the faster the fall off will be. And at the same time, since I had my light really, really close, even though this is already a big light source, I made it even bigger, creating a really nice soft light. And also by having it close, I created a lot of contrast, therefore giving me a very dramatic image. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, you look fantastic, babe. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.